One of the downsides of pivot tables is they have a very distinctive look. Some might even say they're ugly. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover my pivot table formatting tricks that will transform their look and feel from this to this. Plus, some bonus tips that I've accumulated over the 20 plus years I've worked with Excel. By default, row and column labels are sorted alphabetically. Now we can use the built-in sort options via the drop-down list, sorting A to Z or Z to A, and in more sort options, we can sort them in ascending order based on one of the value fields, and likewise in descending order. We can also go into more options, and in here, we can sort based on a custom list. I don't have a custom list that relates to this table, so let's cancel out of there and there. Instead, I'm going to manually sort them, which is often quicker. Here I can type in the field name, so let's say I want revenue first. You can see it just shuffles the pivot table around. The other way to rearrange manually is to select the cell containing the label you want. When you get the four-headed arrow, left click and drag. You can see it's going to place it here and I'll release and now it's sorted the way I want. So I have revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit, expenses, net profit. By default, the column and row labels for the value fields are prefixed with sum of or average of, etc., which is often unnecessary, not to mention this helpful row labels header. You can't simply type actual in place of sum of actual because this field name is already taken. However, you can add a sneaky space before or after actual to differentiate it. I like to add a space at the front so I can right align the column label in keeping with the numbers in the column below. While I'm here, I can replace the row labels header either with a space to override it, or if you don't want the filter drop down and the header name here, up on the Analyze tab, I can turn off field headers. And you can see that's got rid of the drop down and the row labels header. If you want the drop down, just type a space over row labels to get rid of it. Pivot tables can often look too busy and cramped. We can improve their readability by adding blank rows beneath each section. This is done on the Design tab, Blank Rows, Insert Blank Line after each item, and it immediately looks more like a profit and loss report rather than a pivot table. By default, subtotals are placed at the top of each section. However, this may not always be appropriate. You can easily change the position to the bottom of the group via the Design tab, Subtotals, Show all subtotals at bottom of group. While I'm at it, I'm going to get rid of the grand total row. We can do that here via the grand totals drop down, off for rows and columns, or you can just right click on it, remove grand total. It's starting to come together, but it still has that distinctive pivot table formatting. We can remove that by creating a custom style that has no formatting. And to do that, go to the Design tab, and in the Styles gallery, I like to pick the style that has the least formatting. Ideally, it would be this one, but I can't duplicate that, but I can this one. So let's start by duplicating this style that's quite plain. We'll give it a name. I'll call it No Formatting. And then for each table element, simply click Clear. Now you only need to do it for the elements that are in bold font. And you can see the formatting that's been applied to each one. The ones that aren't bold don't have any formatting, so we can skip over those. And there's a few more. OK, that's it. All the formatting's removed. I'll click OK. Now I need to apply that format. Here it is here in the custom group. No formatting. And now I have a blank canvas to apply formatting to. Now the trick here is to select the elements in the pivot table by hovering your mouse over them until you get the arrow to the left. Selecting it, you can see I've selected all of those like elements in the pivot table. Now on the Home tab, I can simply go and apply the formatting. Here I want top border. And then let's repeat for the gross profit and net profit. I have to select them separately, but holding down control allows me to select them together. These ones, I want a single top and double bottom border. Now by selecting them this way, if the pivot table changes shape, gets bigger or smaller, 
the formatting is applied to the elements rather than the cells themselves. And so as those elements move in the worksheet, the formatting goes with them. Expand and collapse buttons enable you to quickly hide and unhide groups of rows and columns. However, they can be a bit ugly if you don't need them. We can turn them off by the Analyze tab and then deselect the buttons icon on the ribbon. Adding visual indicators with conditional formatting can help your audience quickly interpret your report. In this example, I can add indicators to the variance column. Now, ideally, I'll format the whole column and they'll have the same indicators. But here I have a combination of income and expenses, which means negative variances for income are good, but negative variances for expenses are bad. So I need two separate rules. I'll start by selecting the income figures. And then on the home tab, conditional formatting, icon set, and I'll go with these shapes here. We need to modify them. So we'll go back in and manage rules and double click to edit this one. So first of all, I need to reverse the icon order so that red is at the top. And then I want number and number and zero, zero. That's fine. And click OK and OK. So now we can see that the negative variances have a green dot and the positive variances have a red diamond. Let's repeat that for the expense items, so conditional formatting, icon sets, shapes. Let's go back in and manage the rule. It's the top one. And here I want the icon order the same. That's OK. It doesn't need to change. And we'll change this to number and number and click OK and OK. And now we have the icons in the correct order. So we have a negative variance here, which says our expense for depreciation is higher than we'd planned, so that's bad. All the others are positive variances, so they get a green dot because that's good. Now, I should say, if you only have one rule per column, which is the preferred way to apply conditional formats for pivot tables, you want to select either all cells showing variance values or all cells showing variance values for account. This way, if the pivot table grows or contracts, the conditional formatting is going to follow it. You won't have to edit the rules. It will just adapt to the size of the pivot table. I can't do that here because I have different rules for different types of variances. Now, if you're not familiar with conditional formatting, there's a link in the video description to a tutorial on it. When working with pivot tables in a tabular layout, you may want to repeat the row labels for the purpose of using them in lookup formulas or just for aesthetics. And there are a few ways you can do this. We can turn them on for all item labels via the design tab, report layout, repeat all item labels. And there they are. Alternatively, we can turn them off here. If we only want to turn them on for one field at a time, we can right click the field, go into field settings, on the Layout and Print tab, we want Repeat Item Labels. I'll click OK. Having them repeated like this means I can now reference this pivot table in lookup formulas because I have the category row label repeated on each row. By default, pivot tables are created in a compact form, which we can see here, where the row labels are nested. But we can choose different layouts. On the Design tab, we've got Report Layout. So compact form is what it's currently in. We can choose outline form, which adds a blank row between each group. Or we have tabular layout, which is handy if we need to reference the data in a lookup formula, in which case you'll want to repeat all item labels like we looked at previously. When you have blank cells in your source data, those blanks get labeled blank in the pivot table row and column labels, as you can see here. Now, ideally, you should never have blanks in columns that you use in row or column labels, but in the real world, that's not always possible. So the next best thing is to hide the blanks. We can do this quickly by selecting one of them and then simply pressing the space bar and then enter. And you can see it hides them all. And if any new rows get added to the source data, when they're brought into the pivot table, 
that blank format will be applied to them. Of course, you could change the format instead of having a space that hides the word blank, you could put TBA in there or some other useful message. Once you've spent a load of time formatting your pivot table, you'll want to make sure that formatting sticks. We can do this in the pivot table options, right click, pivot table options, and then on the layout and format tab, preserve cell formatting on update. You may also want to deselect auto fit column widths on update if you've set the column widths to something specific. Once you've got the formatting the way you like it, you can set a default pivot table layout via the file tab and then options. And then on the data tab, make changes to the default layout of pivot tables. Click on edit default layout. If you have a pivot table already formatted the way you like, you can simply select it using the selection button here. I already had the pivot table selected when I went into the file options, so it's picked up the cell and we can import the formatting of that pivot table. You can set preferences for the subtotals, grand totals, and report layout. You can have blank rows inserted after each item. You can repeat item labels and include filtered items in totals. We can also set some pivot table options. So for example, the preserving of the formatting, the auto fit column widths, the default value for empty cells. So instead of blank that we saw earlier, you can type that value in here. Now, unfortunately, you can't set preferences for number formats or for styles. They have to be done on a pivot table by pivot table basis. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.